Hello everyone, what is up guys? Right here and welcome back to some more automation and BMG drive. We're building ourselves a muscle car today. It's not going to be a Mustang or a Challenger or a Camaro. It's going to be a European muscle car. No, really, it's going to be a, a European muscle car. It's competing against things like the BMW, the M4 Coupe, or the M3, basically the same car, or the Mercedes-Benz AMG C63. Hopefully the C63, yes, yeah, so around 500 horsepower. It's going to be a V8 engine because long live the V8, of course. It's going to be a European car, though. A naturally aspirated V8, which isn't very common anymore in 2020, but it's possible. We're going to design this car. We are going to drive it in Beeman G. This car is going to have custom sounds. If you guys want me to do a tutorial on that, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I can do a tutorial on how I'm doing custom sounds with automation BMG cars. The sound I'm using for this car today is going to be ripped out of Assetto Corsa from some mods from Assetto Corsa. Uh, let's get into the build itself. So, partial aluminum to start. That sounds like a pretty average, pretty run-of-the-mill thing. It's going to be about... 4,000 pounds or so. It's going to be more of a muscle car. It could be a little more than 4,000 pounds. Not really a, um, it's going to be a bit heavier than the, uh, the C63 or the BMW M4. Monocoque chassis because what else would you really choose? It's 2020. I'll go for age and steel for now. We could change it though and we could go for steel, corrosion resistant, or we can go for maybe light AHS steel depending on the budget later on. Front mounted, longitudinal, of course, double wishbone front and multi link in the rear which is a pretty good 2020 setup here so we're gonna do a, a v8 engine obviously we go for a flat plane crank but it, it doesn't matter the engine sounds custom i don't think the sound sounds like a flat plane crank engine we're gonna go for a 60 degree v8 it's gonna be a pretty large v8 now the current car sold in europe we got the ford mustang with the five liter v8 sold in europe but besides that there's not really a lot of cars with naturally aspirated v8 sold in europe i, I actually can't really recall much besides maybe trucks if any trucks are really sold there no, I don't think so. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, 5 liters sounds reasonable. It's fine. There's no problems with 5 liters of displacement for a V8, but we're going to bump it up to 6 liters because we do things a little bit spicier, a little bit crazier over here. It's going to be a Dutch vehicle. It's going to be a new company today. So a brand new car company, brand new car. Uh, they are going to be a competitor to the German rivals. We got BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and Audi, a competitor to those ones, except they're going to focus a little more on just, just just coolness you know just cool factor it's gonna have a naturally aspirated v8 what's cooler than that we're gonna go for lightweight and forged we might keep it all just as forged we could go to titanium but we'll keep it lightweight forged forged steel and forged pistons for now you don't really want to go for cast because you get one less one less octane to use for your fuel later on which well, i want more octane all the octane the better right we're gonna go for a 50 cam profile to start let's go for a 10.5 to 1 compression ratio and erect injection, twin, performance, and premium. Just run-of-the-mill standard stuff for a muscle car. Dual exhaust, we're going to go for a 2.5-inch exhaust. High flow, three-way. Reverse flow, and no secondary. You know what? It's 2020. We have to abide by some sort of emission standards and stuff. There are Euro emissions, so we'll, we'll go for that. We'll go for just, just actual mufflers the entire time. Reverse flow, reverse flow. Maybe baffled, a little louder. Pistons are a little stressed out, but that's that's okay. We can fix that with lightweight forge. We'll do that. The clown rod's a little stressed. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Just don't rev it out all the time. It's not going to be best in class performance. Um, I think 460 horse is pretty much the Ford Mustang horsepower. I think we have a bit more torque at 450 or so pound feet. Yeah, it's it's not it's not class leading. That's okay. It's not going to be class leading. It, it, it's about you know it's it's the ultimate driving machine. Except it's it's not BMW. Don't sue me, BMW. I I, I mean, it's a joke. It's a joke. Okay, this is gonna be a car focused on driving dynamics, um, and just the feel of driving. Not really focused on the most power, not the highest technology because obviously it's a naturally aspirated V8. And in 2020, that's not the best thing out there. You know, as much as I love no replacement for displacement. I mean, turbochargers are replacing displacement. Rear wheel drive to start off. Dual clutch, seven speed. It's European. Um, performance cars don't have too much manual transmissions. I know, I, I know, it's crazy, right? Uh, this is a high-tech car. In some regards, the performance is all that matters. It's the feel. It's going to be the, good for driving dynamics. Lower the speed limiter to 240 to save some money on tires. We could go all-wheel drive. We might go all-wheel drive later. We'll see in a second here. Radial tires. 275's rear. Let's give it a bit of a, a bulge on the side because, you know, nothing's wrong with a little bit of a bulge in your car. 255 front, 275's rear. That sounds like a pretty... That's a pretty realistic amount. For some reason, with this body, though, 
The front wheels can get spaced out nicely, so it's very, very flush. The rear, not as much. Give it some big front brakes. Fully cluttered tray, because we're going to need to do some things to increase the fuel economy. It's going to be a 2 plus 2 car. And we'll give it a sport interior, premium interior, premium infotainment. It's going to be, it's still a, a, a premium car. ESC plus launch control. We're going to give it advanced 10 safety. They're going to skimp on the safety a little bit. Just skipping on the safety here. It goes for semi-active sway bars, semi-active dampers. And we'll just do a sport tune for now. So right now, 24 MPG American. That's not terrible. Under 4,000 pounds. That's not terrible. It's about the same as the BMW, actually. And a pretty good weight distribution. We're, we're 52, 40, 40, 48, about that. We can do some things to give it a better weight distribution as well. 25 MPG average if we're rounding up, which is not terrible. So weight distribution. So we've got a slightly heavy nose. We're going to go ahead and actually change the brakes to solid discs in the rear. We're going to go for three pistons. And the four pistons in the front are fine. I'm trying to change that weight bias. We're going to try to change it a little more. Give it 285s in the rear. It's going to help us out uh, by putting the power down a little more efficiently as well. What else can we do here to increase the weight? I'm wondering... Do some cars have carbon ceramics in the front and then none in the rear? We can go carbon ceramics up front. That's going to save us a bit. If it's not realistic, we're going to make it realistic. Carbon ceramics up front and solid discs in the rear to help with the weight distribution. I I, I don't know why, but it's going to help apparently. So the goal for this car, it's going to have custom sounds. It's going to sound great. It's also going to drive great. That's the goal. This car is going to sound great. It's going to drive great. And it's going to look good as well. It's not going to be as high tech or luxurious as the competitors a work on a darn well try. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna design this car in a time lapse. I'm gonna narrate the whole thing like I always do. Um, what what I'll also do too is I'll also record the entire thing like I always do, and I'll try to upload the entire thing, uh, maybe in an unlisted video, or maybe I'll just post it for my YouTube members. If you guys want to join a YouTube membership, link is down below. If you guys want to join that, and I'll post it so you guys can maybe see it. If you guys are a member, you guys can just watch me do the full thing. Cause that sounds relaxing. I don't know. Maybe you guys like that. I'm going to design the car. I will probably tweak the engine to get a little more power because 460 is less horsepower than the BMW M3 or the C63. Not the M3 competition or the C63S. This is like BMW M2 power or like A45 AMG. So it's it's down on power. Uh, so sit back, relax, guys. And of course, I hope you enjoy. So now we're starting our European muscle car build. First things first, I'm going to tune this car up to 500 horsepower. I'll give it worse MPG. Uh, I'll also going to have a better weight distribution because I want as close to 50-50 as, as reasonably possible. Next thing I'm doing is working on the front end design of the car, obviously. Using reverse dog tape to cut out the front end of the car. Uh, make my headlight shape, make my grill shape, make the rest of the front faces shape. I changed the car to a leather texture so I can see everything a little bit easier. See the body lines a little bit easier. Adding some black grills to the front so far just so we can see them a bit better we'll change them to actual grills later on i added some air intakes on the side as well and onto wheels i put some simple mirrors on there and then adding some body molding to make the front end look a little bit more defined adding the uh projectors inside the headlights for now adding some grill bars on the outsides of the grill uh, and i'll do that on the headlights as well to actually make it so the grill is not just a gaping hole in our vehicle with like you can stick your hand through it's gonna be an actual grill like a normal car doing the same thing to the headlights We've added a spot where the badge is going to go for the front end, but I'm not too sure what we're doing there yet. I'm not too sure on the brand or anything yet, but we're still going on. Adding the backing of our headlights, so it's a proper headlight. And then adding our daytime running lights, and we're going to add our turn signal after that to the front end. If you guys want to see the full time lapse of this build, the full uncut time lapse, two hours, uh, there is a video for YouTube members. Um, if you check out my channel, join the YouTube memberships. I've changed the front end to the grill now. I've changed the side. Uh, I'm adding basically a, a side sort of sill, a side skirt to give it a little bit more detail. It's not perfectly done yet, but it's getting there. We have a big indentation on the front door the front door area as well. A big sort of like a check mark shape or a V-shape kind of thing. Adding our own cutouts to the doors because we are blocking them with our body molding, etc, etc. Back end, I, I have more trouble with this at the, at the, at the start, uh, but I think it turns out actually probably the best angle or one of the best angles. Adding these similar taillights to the headlights. Uh, adding a, a bit more detail on the side, like a door handle, and changing the, the side as well. Now working on the the rear diffuser of the car. It is much more difficult than I thought. Um, to wake one that looks pretty good. This body, uh, th this bo these body styles, this is like the test the body kind of thing. It's got massive rear ends in these cars, so it's really hard to find one that's not too crazy big. Oh, I think we did a pretty good job. Uh, the rear taillights are cut out, adding some actual LEDs now to the taillights, so they look kind of cool. Just very basic, very simple. Looks very clean. I like how it looks. Looks like uh, modern BMWs, etc., etc. We do have a nice ducktail spoiler on the car the back tail lights are now covered in glass now it's time to work on the rear diffuser and this again is where i had lots of trouble with the car i am just cutting it out it is very similar i i looked at the audi rs6 for inspiration and then i built off there obviously we've got a much larger 
uh, rear diffuser than an Audi RS6, even though that thing is a wagon and we're driving a coupe in our car. So the bottom of uh, the back is sort of cut out with reverse dog tape, adding some black cladding in some spots where it works and making sure it's cut out nice and fine. I'm going to add quad exhaust in this car. I added just above the rear diffuser area, which is not done yet at this current time, adding some bars now to make the rear diffuser. I do change it up and add these um, sort of grill pieces to make it have like like cutouts or like like V-cuts sort of slits in the, the in the diffuser area, adding some bars in the back just to add some more detail. I did change the name to Vanderine, adding a V-badge, adding a, some, uh, some sensors, some parking sensors to the front, because you need it, it's 2020. I uh, tried to add some details to the front of like parking sensors as well. I added some rear parking sensors, but I got rid of the front ones on the front middle grille. Changing the color to yellow, and in front of us is the Vanderine Vaster Plus 8. So finally, like I said guys, the Vanderine Vaster Plus 8. I'm not too sure on the, the car name. So Vanderine is the brand name, it's a new brand in my automation cinematic universe. The Vaster uh, is the model name and the Plus 8 is the performance model for the Vaster or for the Vanderine brand in general. It looks super cool. We'll go over the design of the car in a second. Uh, let's go over the engineering and stuff. You probably heard just a second ago the actual exhaust this car that's or the engine note of this car it sounds a lot different than your stock automation car that's what it's going to sound like at bmg i'll go over more of that later on let's take a look at the engineering changes so i did change a lot of the engineering i think it's now down to corrosion resistant steel instead of ahs steel so it is a bit heavier it makes 500 horsepower now revs to 7400 rpm or so 465 pound feet of torque so it does compete with things like the c63s coupe the bmw m4 competition as well as the Audi RS5, I think would be in the same competitor. I think that's the same competitor. Um, so it competes in and around all of those things. It is rear wheel drive still, so it's not all wheel drive. Like the, I think the BMW is now all wheel drive. The Audi RS5 is all wheel drive. And I think the next generation C Class is going to be all wheel drive in AMG form. I think it's going to have like a four cylinder engine, which is pretty crazy. So, engine, lightweight forwards internals. I wanted to light up the engine as much as I could. 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds, which is pretty much the same as the BMW and the Mercedes-Benz. Uh, we'll see in BMG, it is a lot faster than that, somehow, in BMG Drive. Electric LSD, obviously. It's got 285s rear. Alloy wheels, we could have went carbon fiber, and these wheels look super cool. I like how they look. We'll keep going here, though. Uh, carbon ceramics up front, solid discs in the rear. Might not be the best choice. I'm sure you could find cars that have carbon ceramics front and solid discs, uh, and then non-carbon ceramics in the rear. Uh, I, I can't remember, I, I don't know any off the top of my head, but I know there, there probably is some, I know it's doable, it's fine, uh, just to play with the weight distribution of the car a bit. No under tray, no cooling flaps down, which does affect our MPG, we're down to 20 MPG average, so it's not the best fuel economy, in fact, it's, I think it's the worst in class fuel economy, but then again, Vanderine doesn't care so much about fuel economy, um, for this model, as it does for, you know, things like performance and just thrill. Uh, sport interior, premium heads of display for entertainment. Uh, the, the safety is pretty much the same, I think. A very aggressive front end. My design, um, philosophy of this was a bit of, a, a bit of Jaguar we started off with. It's got a little bit of Audi in there. It's got a little bit of, a little bit of a lot of stuff. A little bit of Lincoln. It's got a lot of, a lot of design in there. But it is quite unique in its own way. I'm going to be uploading a video again of the full build. Two hours of the entire build. This build is about two hours long for the design of this car. Uh, if you guys are a member of my channel, a YouTube member. So I'll link the membership joining button down below. So we got these nice creases in the front end here. We got this sort of big, wide, and low front grill with the Vanderine V in the middle. All my cars just have like letters as the badges because I have no brand logos. And that's fine for now. I might make logos at some point, but that's fine. We have this very aggressive side intakes here. We got these uh, nice headlamps. We got this daytime running light that goes right here as well. It's the tail light right there. It's a nice daytime running light. It goes right there. We also have our left and our right turn signals here as well. They look pretty good up front. The wheels, they are super cool. I absolutely love them. The, the whole side of this car is very, very, very chiseled. Very, very, very angular. Lots of hard, crazy lines. So we did cut out our own door 
our own door jams here with our indentations. We have this sort of side trim here. We have this big sort of bulge going along the side. It actually sort of curves a little bit weirdly. It blends a little weirdly. That's okay. We got this dent, this kink in the side, which some people don't like, but I personally think it's super quirky and it just looks interesting to say the least. It's pretty simple in the sense that there's no trunk cut out because I, I, I absolutely gave up after after uh, after doing this and if you guys watch the full design video you guys will see i gave up making the trunk at this point i'm like this is just crazy a lot of work here plus eight badge for some reason the u and the plus always keeps changing back to t it should be a u i i swear guys it was a u look it's a u it's a u go to v go to that i don't know why plus eight is the performance trim uh we got these quad L exhaust it's similar to a bit of fur it's a bit of a higher exhaust tips uh similar to ferrari we got these nice tail lights that sort of swoop all the way across here with these sharp edges and they sort of go up like the front headlights they sort of go up at the top edges where the turn signal is a very aggressive rear diffuser here is obviously a fake rear diffuser but it's very aggressive nonetheless we got some little sensors at the back there for parking we got sensors up front there for parking as well so it's got everything you need a bit of a hood bulge too like a big hood bulge my gosh this car's got a big old bulge on it but yeah this is the Vanderine vaster and i'm not set on vaster i might change it but for the purposes of this video it's gonna be the vaster if you guys know something else that i should name this let me know in the comments down below i want to keep it with like a v name and something kind of fun something kind of fun um obviously not all of these cars trims would be the high performance v8 i'm assuming there'd be like a four cylinder model probably but the plus eight is a very high performance car from vanderine it's a dutch company it's my new dutch company um but yeah that's the plus eight we're gonna hop into beam and g and we're gonna hear this custom exhaust uh and i'll explain a little more on how it works um, we'll hop into beam and G, we'll do that, we'll drive the crap out of this thing, I'll see you guys there in just a sec. Alright guys, so we're here in beam and G, of course, with the Vanderine Vaster Plus 8. Before we drive this car, let's just appreciate its beautiful looks. I think it's honestly, well, probably one of my favorite cars I've ever made, ever. And I say that, you know, I say that like almost every time, because every time I just try a little harder to make my cars that much nicer. Anyways, um, the car looks awesome in this nice yellow. The only thing that's kind of glitching out is these taillights. They are a little bit... Interesting. Uh, they're glitching out. That's okay. We're going to ignore that today. The V8 badge looks kind of weird too, but it's a mod badge. I don't blame it. The car besides that looks actually awesome. And it sounds really, really good. You can hear the idle here. It's pretty, it's pretty loud. It might be a little loud. Uh, we're going to go for a cruise first. Uh, we're not doing a 0-60 to 60 test yet. So we're not going to do anything yet. We're just going to take it for a cruise and listen to the exhaust. This is a custom exhaust, obviously. It's not perfectly done, but... It sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty good! I don't know, I'm liking it. We're gonna break here for a second. Do a little bit of a quick launch. No, I hope we weren't timing that, because the 0-60 is going to be very impressive. We're going to go back here and just drive it in normal mode while I sort of talk about the exhaust. So the exhaust is actually a mod from Assetto Corsa. So I took an Assetto Corsa mod, uh, a mod file from Assetto Corsa, and I pretty much stole all the audio out of that. It's not stole. I took all the audio out of that, um, and I imported it into the BBG car. Now, the audio itself is actually apparently from a Ford Mustang, if you believe it. It's from a Ford Mustang. It sounds like it's more from, like, a German muscle car, because it sounds, it just sounds, ouch, just beautiful. It sounds great. What we're going to do is launch it uh, with the manual mode, manual shifters. We're going to launch it from neutral, obviously. I mean, we're, you know, we'll do our launch control in manual. So not, not even trying that hard. This is not my fastest ever. This is just a casual run, 0 to 60 or 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, which is 62 miles an hour in 3.1 seconds, which is pretty astonishing for a rear-wheel drive car. The Ford Mustang, to put this in perspective, with a 460 horsepower, I think it's 460, 440, 400, 400 and something horsepower, um, 450 horsepower or so, V8 rear-wheel drive with launch control. That's a torque converter, though, not a dual-clutch transmission. 0 to 60 in that thing is, like, just under 4 seconds. I think 3.9 is what it can do. I think it's rated for, like, more than more than 4 seconds. 3.9 is what it can do. Let's go first person and try again. Again, 3.1. A consistent 3.1. The lowest I've gone on this thing was 2.9. I think less than 2.9, like 2.85. So under 2.9 seconds to 60. To 100, not even 60. The audio is not perfect. It is quite hard to get it to be 
exactly perfect, but I think it just sounds so cool. And it's so nice to have a different sound. I think we're gonna hop into the automation test track, because I wanna test I wanna test this car in the automation test track. And we'll hop into the jump arena because we gotta jump every car as is tradition. Oh, it's a little bit sketchy. A little spooky. Yep, definitely. We'll hop into the automation test track. Let's do a hot lap uh, and see what this thing does there. Instead of the automation test track, we are in a autocross circuit. I mean, this is not the autocross circuit, but this is like an autocross map. It's a, lot. It's, it's a racetrack. It's the Lakeside Park Raceway map. Uh, we are doing one of the courses here, time trials here, with the Vanderine Vaster Plus 8. It's a mouthful of a name. I'm not liking the name. Let me know a name for the car, not the brand. Vanderine Stang, but a, a Dutch name. It starts with a V, hopefully. Okay, let's start the race here. Let's actually control ESC off. Let's go first person. <laughs> Get the most performance on this car in first person. It's a little, it's a little sketchy. Breaking here. Woo! Yeah, no checks. Control definitely is a little spicy. Oh, it's pretty quick. It doesn't feel crazy fast, but it handles nice. Like it's, it's very balanced. Of course, it's, it's a near 50-50 weight distribution, so I hope it's pretty balanced. Come on. A 105 seems pretty good. That seems fine. I, I've got absolutely nothing to compare this to. Absolutely nothing. Let's go for a free one for a second here. Go for another casual hot lap here. Get a feeling for this car. We're in third person now. So it is new, very neutral handling. The only other car that I think that has handled well, better than this in recent memory, was my three-wheeled car, which is my previous video. I think handled like was on rails is crazy. A brake here, brake here. Brakes are fading a bit. Yeah, this car is not the best for autocross, it seems. The brakes are completely cooked at this point in time. If they kept doing hot laps, the brakes would just keep dying more and more. Uh, we'll do a jump in the jump arena, see how this thing jumps, and finish off there. You know, I'm really starting to wonder if maybe this car is too loud for the video. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyways, we're at the Car Jump Arena. We're going to finish off here doing just a quick jump, see how far this thing goes. Now, our record is around 500 or so. Just kidding. Our record is actually past the jump, but we'll see what we can do. Top speed of this thing by gearing is over 300 kilometers an hour, so it's probably going to hit that, I think, in a straight line. Oh, it's fast. Oh, boy, got it. Yep. We hit 300, 280, 290. We'll stay in seventh here. And we're gonna land. Not that great. 440 or so. And the whole front end is completely kicked now. Can we just grab it actually? Let's just rescue her from the from the water here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Vanderine. There we go. Just just drop on the ground. Perfect. And it still runs and drives, obviously runs and drives. If we go back to first gear. I think it's probably going to drive perfectly fine. There is no inside of the wheels. Alright guys, so that is the end of the Vanderine Vaster Plus 8. A lot of fun to build this car, tons of fun. Uh, if you guys want to see that full video of me building the car, talking the whole time, you got to be a YouTube member. I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to join. I want to give a huge shout out though to my current YouTube members. Uh, thanks so much to Childish Sin, DD Men, and Ruben, you guys are awesome. And everyone else who is a member as well, you guys are really awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you guys want to join the Discord, link is in the description down below as well. I'm always active in Discord, so hop in and come hang out with me. Uh, is, that, is that everything? I think that's all I have to say. So thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you next time.